Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to the channel. I've already confirmed my transfer for Double Game Week 24 with Robertson, Mane, and Firmino on my watch list and a quick deadline approaching. Should I play the triple captainship? The average score of Game Week 23 was low, 44 points. My team scored 51 points, which resulted in small green arrows and a rise to near 600k in the overall rank. The season has been a blow to my ego. Being out here in front of you guys telling you that my captain scored zero points this week hasn't been easy, but I wanted to post this video early so I don't leave you guys in the dark with a quick deadline. To better understand my transfer decision for Double Game Week 24, I'm going to begin by analyzing key performances from Game Week 23. Had I not watched the games, my transfers could have been very different. My team continues to shift off template with a combination of players I'm excited to watch. So here we go, Game Week 23 review. On the previous video, I talked about the risk of owning too many players from the same teams. The spotlight was on Wolves and Leicester. This week, I'm going to start with the positives. Wolves came back from two goals down to beat Southampton 3-2 at St. Mary's. Raul Jimenez, 13 points, two goals, and maximum bonus. But he could have scored a hat-trick. With this brace, Jimenez became the all-time Premier League top scorer in Wolves history. No player in FPL has more goal contributions in all competitions this season than Jimenez. 19 goals, 9 assists. Adama Traore, 10 points from 2 assists, 2 bonus points. Traore's end product has improved drastically from last season. Check out these stats. 2018-19, 1 goal, 3 assists. 2019-20, 5 goals, 9 assists, and counting. I can understand if you sold Traore or Jimenez, or both, because they weren't at their best, while Southampton were in excellent form. I had replacements ready in case they failed. Docore, Firmino, Rashford. My instinct, it was actually telling me to give Traore and Jimenez another chance, and I felt they were unlucky to be bench game week 20, which made their recent form look worse. They delivered above my expectations and earned their place in my squad. Now for the bad news, Leicester City. Keep in mind Burnley had a total of five shots on target in their previous five games heading into this one. Ben Chilwell, zero points, didn't even make the squad without warning, and it's not for the first time. I really needed a starting defender with good scoring potential in this position because Tompkins was up against Manchester City. I always try to look at the positives, and I actually think I was lucky because I was using Chilwell as a differential against the more popular Soyuncu. And Soyuncu conceded twice against Burnley for a one-point return. James Madison, two points. I have some notes on Madison and Vardy, which I'm going to show you in a second. What I didn't like about Madison was seeing him go down a bit too easy, which triggered the Burnley fans into booing his every touch. Jamie Vardy, zero points. Captain, fail. Quiet first half, which is not unusual for Vardy. He only needs one chance to sneak in behind the defense and score. What was unusual was the penalty miss, because he's normally so lethal from the spot. He was also denied by Pope one-on-one -on -one just minutes after that penalty miss. Here are my notes on Vardy and Madison. You can pause the video if you'd like. I'm focusing on performances. Sometimes points can be misleading. Yes, Leicester lost again, but their attack is starting to come back to life. Leicester had 18 shots to Burnley's 8. Pope was man of the match. And Didi is also coming back to training, and he does more than just protect the defense. His hard work allows Madison to be more creative, and he helps Vardy on the counter with his quick passing and transition from defense to attack. Should I give Madison and Vardy one more chance, as I did with Traore and Jimenez last week? Some more good news, Alexander-Arnold, 10 points, 6 consecutive clean sheets, and another perfect corner to Van Dijk. That's now 11 assists for the season. Only Kevin De Bruyne has more assists than Trent, who is now averaging 10 points per game in his last 6. He is a strong contender for the captaincy in the double game week. Mo Salah, 7 points. Salah was marked tightly in the first half, but he was always full of energy and looked determined to score. He had a brutal mischance early in the second half from a cross by Robertson. Then the best way to describe his late goal is to just show you my notes. Now for the rest of the squad, John Lundstrom, two points. He blanked and was subbed off early against Arsenal. No attacking returns in his last six games and Manchester City next. I'm most likely going to bench Lundstrom this week and use him in a rotation system going forward. Kevin De Bruyne at two points. He worked hard to create chances, and I thought he was unlucky not to score with a free kick that hit the crossbar. Danny Yang's two points. 
That was probably the worst performance of the season for Mings, and his manager hinted at rotation on Wednesday. As we push toward the end of the season, the risk of injuries and rotation increases. So we're seeing players drop left and right now. Having a stronger bench can help. Speaking of the bench, Jack Grealish, 10 points. It was always between Triori and Grealish to sit out game week 23. They both ended up on 10 points. But even if Triori blanked, I rarely look at bench points as a negative. I want to feel safer knowing my bench players can step in if needed. So what's the plan for double game week 24? My transfer plan is already in motion. Chilwell is out. Somehow he avoided a price drop over the weekend, which gave me an opportunity to cash out for a profit. I also intend on benching Lundstrom against City, starting Grealish at home versus Watford. So confirmed, transfers out, Chilwell, transfers in, Robertson. I made the decision to go for Robertson instead of Firmino. The original idea with Firmino was a short-term gamble for the double game week, then a straightforward swap to Rashford because he was hurting my rank. Now Rashford has a fractured back, so I moved in a different direction. That's now six clean sheets in as many starts for Robertson, but his attacking threat, it relieves the pressure on clean sheet points. I can remember in the 47th minute, Robertson put in a great cross from the left, Salah scuffed his shot just wide. Big chance created by Robertson. I could have also brought in Mane, but it didn't feel right to tear up my squad by selling Madison or Triori, or both, and it required a hit. I've also kept strength on my bench. Ings and Lundstrom are at risk of being rotated by their managers midweek. Triori provides cover and rotation for my attackers, Tompkins for the defenders. Rashford, Richarlison, and Saar are just a few of the players who have already been ruled out with injuries, so the bench could come into action midweek. My transfer decision targets this mini double game week and sets up my team for the long term. I have two free transfers as insurance with replacements ready if needed. For example, if Leicester attackers fail to deliver, one idea can shift Madison and Vardy to Trossard and Aguero without a hit. The question is whether I can trust Trossard over Madison and is Aguero 100% safe from rotation. Marez was the latest victim of Pep Roulette with a one point bench cameo game week 23. At the moment, my plan is to keep Madison and Vardy just like I did with Wolves players last week. To save some time and get this video out quickly, I'm attaching notes about my watch list and other key players on the Game Week 24 blog at Upper90Studios.com. Thank you for all the likes and all the positive comments. I wish you big green arrows, Game Week 24. So that's going to be a wrap for today. Stay tuned for my next video. If you like my music, all my songs are free to download on the website. See the link in the description. Be sure to follow at Upper90 Studios on Twitter, Facebook, or Instagram, where you'll get an inside scoop before YouTube. And if you're brand new to the channel, be sure to like and subscribe and turn on your post notifications because this season is going to be epic. Don't forget to subscribe to our email list and get your free fixture difficulty cheat sheet. Click the fantasy tab at Upper90Studios.com. If you're on a computer, it's at the top right of the page. If you're on the phone, it's at the bottom. Thanks for watching. See you soon. Thank you.